Hey guys, what's going on? Richie from Photons Across the Air. So um, I basically have a few uh, cheap and expensive laser pointers that I got from a person on laser pointer forums from a very reputable person. In fact, I will put um, the link in the description if you choose to buy some or not. But you kind of have to be careful on where you get these from because you can buy 10 of them on eBay and there's a big chance that four or five of them won't work. You know, that's pretty much how these 301s and 850s and 851s and 303s go. Uh, a lot of times they don't work when you get them in the mail, but depends on who you get them from is depending on if they're gonna work or not. So really, I just wanted to make this video talking about how fun it was to have lasers like this. I'm not bored, you know, I'm not looking for something to post. I just wanna talk about this because there's a lot of people that seem to be buying these laser pointers and some of them having problems with them. And I think these lasers are a lot of fun. If you're in the market for some cheap and expensive laser pointers, I would recommend going to this particular place and that place is laserpointerstore.com. Um, the guy is a member on Laser Pointer Forums. He's very reputable and he ships your stuff out. You'll get it within two weeks. That's a very, very good time frame. So laserpointerstore.com, I would definitely recommend going there uh, if you plan on purchasing some of these uh, inexpensive laser pointers because they are, like I said, a lot of fun. But I have a couple of eight, uh, JD850s and a 301. Now they, ha they make 851, uh, 850, and the JD based ones, 301, 303. And all of those are pretty much inexpensive lasers that you know you can get and just play with, you know. And the cool thing about these type of lasers is that if they break, it's really no big deal because they're so cheap. Um, now this is a 200 milliwatt uh, 650, and this is a 40 milliwatt 532, and a 80 milliwatt 532. Now of course the 532s uh, are module based or DPSS based, so these are more uh, you know susceptible to temperature changes around your uh, you know around the environment that you're in. However, the 650 is obviously direct diode, and so temperature changes in the environment around you really aren't going to fluctuate the output very much. Now, I have tested all three of these on the laser power meter, and of course, most of the time when you get these, they are over spec, and so the 200 milliwatt is actually peaks out at about 221, which is great. Um, about 132 milliwatts on a lithium iron phosphate 4 battery, or 221 milliwatts on a lithium ion 16340. Of course, I just use the 16340 since you get more output. And on the 40 milliwatt 532, you get about 66 to 67 milliwatts, uh, around close to 70 milliwatts. And on the 80 milliwatt one, I'm hitting almost 100, about 90 something. And it does drop, this one is the only one that drops significantly. Uh, maybe this one's a little bit more unstable than this one, uh, but that's okay. Now, I have a lot of name brand lasers. And in fact, I've built some, uh, some of my own lasers. And it's great to have some of these little cheap Chinese lasers because they're a lot of fun. And if they break, it's no big deal. Now you can take all of these lasers apart. Um, however, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, taking this one apart is pretty easy. Um, taking the 532s apart, probably not such a good idea, but they all pretty much disassemble the same way. You have the, of course, the head tail cap there. Got the cheap little 16340 in there. And you gotta be really careful about taking this completely apart because this is actually the heat sink. And if you take it apart carefully, then you can see that there is a spring and there, of course, is the driver. Beyond the driver is where it's soldered to the actual diode. I don't know how well the, son, uh, the uh, contact points are uh, on the soldering contact points, I mean, so I wouldn't take the circuit off there or take the driver off there, but you can take this piece off as well. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much all it is. Now, the 532, I imagine it's the exact same way, but except for uh, all the stuff around there, you have an actual round cylindrical module, like you pretty much mostly see uh, when you purchase modules itself from eBay or Amazon or something like that. Uh, but you can't take all these apart, so like I said, I wouldn't recommend it unless you um, know what you're doing or unless you uh, have a whole bunch of them laying around. All right, so here is, of course, the 200 milliwatt 650. I like how it looks really pink on camera, <laughs> but we obviously know that pink lasers do not exist and uh, diode-based or even DPSS, of course, um, pink is not in that visible light spectrum. In order to have pink, of course, you have to mix two wavelengths, uh, red and purple, to get pink, so... Obviously that's not pink, but it looks pink. That'd be nice if uh, pink lasers did exist in single diode or DPSS form, but they don't. Now here's the 40 milliwatt 532, or so-called 40 milliwatt, when in reality it's around uh, 70. Now these particular lasers do not have an infrared filter that I know of, uh, so keep that in mind. Um, I do have laser safety glasses that measure in ranges from 190 nanometers to 540 nanometers. And so these two green wavelengths, the 532, are within that range and can be blocked out. So you cannot see any of the green light. Uh, but 
at an angle, never, obviously, never look directly into the laser, even if you're wearing those glasses, because you may not be covered for that particular wavelength of infrared or something like that. But I don't believe that my laser glasses um, protect you from infrared light. And so when you turn it on and look at it from an angle, not directly into it, but at an angle, you can barely see that hint of red light. So if your glasses could handle that uh, wavelength, then it obviously would not, uh, would not show the, uh, the infrared light. And if it doesn't have an IR filter, then you'd be able to notice by wearing those glasses when the green light is completely blocked out and you can see that red light, uh, that there is no infrared filter on the laser itself. So keep that in mind, these two lasers, uh, the 301 and JD850, and probably the 851 and 303 uh, do not have an IR filter. Then of course the 80 milliwatt, 532. Then we have 80 milliwatt and 70 milliwatt. Well. 90 milliwatt, really, 90 milliwatts, and we have about 70, so. You know, when I was, when I first got into lasers, I used to see a lot of these 301s, I used to see them online all the time, and I thought, you know what, I'm never gonna buy one of those cheap pieces of crap because I don't like cheap laser pointers. But when you actually get them in person, they're a lot of fun. Uh, because you don't have to worry about breaking them. You know, when you have a $175 laser sitting around, or a $200 jet laser, like I do, I have a uh, Jet Lasers uh, Equality Series, the 462NM, then you kind of worry about, you know, it's almost like you're treating it like it's gold, you know, or uh, like it's a piece of glass. You try to be as careful with it as possible because it's so expensive. But these things are so cheap, it doesn't really matter. So one thing I thought was pretty interesting, um, I know there's a, you know, there's something that everybody uh, who has a laser has to abide by. It's kind of like a, a law of the laser industry. And that is that every laser produces a huge amount of heat. The more powerful the laser is, the more heat it produces. That's obvious. And the more heat sinking that you need to disperse that heat out from the diode. But this is a 200 milliwatt or 221 milliwatt uh, 650, which is almost a quarter of a watt. Now the duty cycle on this is obviously around 60 seconds, but I have left it on as long as three minutes because, well, for something like this, I really don't care. If it breaks, I'll buy another one. But I leave this thing on for two, three, sometimes even four minutes. In fact, I actually left it on for five to six minutes one day because I totally forgot that I left it on. And the outside exterior of the laser didn't even get remotely even a tad warm. Uh, there, there was really no fluctuation or increase in temperature on the actual exterior or outside of the heat sink. So that heat either may not be uh, be able to be dispersed evenly, maybe there's just maybe it's not being able to be dispersed through the heatsink, or maybe it's not getting as hot as I originally thought it was. Now the inside of the laser diode, or the, uh, of course the photodiode and stuff are, those can get pretty hot, but I would imagine if this go get really hot, then wouldn't the heatsink eventually start getting warm? Which it does not. So, kind of confuses me. I've got, you know, several two and three watt blue lasers that get really, really hot after, you know, 30 to 40 seconds, but you know, stuff like this, I really just don't know about. I don't really know a whole lot about this this kind of, you know, this setup, I guess, if you want to say. Um, when a duty cycle like this is specifically set to a certain amount of time, it doesn't even get warm. So is it really damaging that laser? I mean, I really don't know. Maybe you guys can give me some input. So in case you guys didn't know, I'll go ahead and cover it really quick uh, because some of these come with instructions and some of them don't. Usually, most of the time, in fact, almost 90% of the time, the 60 milliwatts, I'm sorry, 60 milliwatts, uh, the 650 nanometer lasers are usually case negative. So remember that the positive contact point of the battery is obviously face first and it's case negative. So remember that red lasers are usually case negative. And pretty much most of the time, 532s or greens are case positive based on the fact that usually infrared lasers uh, require a uh, case positive connection and since 532s do consist of an infrared laser, that is mostly why they're case positive. So we'll go ahead and stick that in there. So I'm just basically saying that, so in case you guys buy one and don't know what the uh, polarity is on it. In the process of warming up, I guess. It's kind of cold in here. Another green, 532. That is also case positive, so. Now, of course, this guy does come with a key lock, and you can use that if you want to. I have, I have mine unlocked all the time case positive on the 301 as well.